Hey everyone, I hope you all are doing good and having a wonderful day. In this video, we are going to dive deep into parameter tampering. So I already have created one video on parameter tampering where I have shown you that how we can manipulate the price to any amount that we want, right? But that particular scenario was a basic one, right? So in most of the real world scenario, you won't find that particular case, right? Where you can just uh, intercept the request and just play with the parameter and the value gets changed. So in this video, we're going to see that what we need to do if there is some kind of protection going on and to be specific, if there is a, a hash associated with the amount is going in the backend as a request, right? So we're going to see that how we can bypass that if all of these things are happening at the front end or at the client side right so let's see how we can do this and but before we into this video if you haven't checked out my previous video then go ahead and check it out the link of that particular video is given in the description as well as you can click on the link displaying at the right side of the screen right and now with that being said let us get started so before we dive deep into how we actually need to find this particular vulnerability first we need to understand that what are the common ways uh, using which we the developers or anyone can protect uh, their application from parameter tampering right so one of the most common scenario that you'll see is that they'll use a hash function okay they'll basically use a hash function so let's try to understand what this is going to do so for example let's say we have a web application over here and yeah please don't mind my uh, drawing place okay so we have this web application and we're going to assume that this web application is uh, e-commerce okay so e-commerce application this is and in this application we have uh, let's say a buy now uh, uh, functionality where the price is let's say the price is uh, let's say dollar four and uh, there is a buy now button okay simple as that so this is the button over here now once the uh, user clicks on buy now what is getting sent at the back end right so we are going to assume that this is the back end server right back end server right so what is happening behind behind the scene is that normally in the previous scenario we saw that the price was directly getting sent at the back end with the post request where the price was just something like this that price equals to four and uh, button equals to submit something like that right which is getting sent at the back end right but in this case along with the price what is extra going to be sent right so let me just show you so i'm just going to get rid of this let me just use the eraser over here yeah so now the price will be there but apart from the price there will be some extra parameters which is the hash parameters let me just show you what i mean by that so suppose the price is uh four okay apart from this there's an extra parameter going on which is hash and which will be the hash of this particular value right so that could be a hash of anything but we're going to assume that this is the hash of this particular value which is uh amount right so if the amount is four let's say the hash generated is let's say uh, a b c d okay a b c d and this thing is now going to be sent at the back end right now the back end is going to again see what is the value of price parameter it will it will see that the, okay the value of price is four it's going to generate the hash so the hash generated will be a b c d and then it is going to verify whether this hash generated is the same hash which is provided from the front end or not if it is the same then it's going to allow payment right otherwise it will understand that okay there is some kind of parameter tampering happening right so this is one of the most common protection that you'll see right so the problem here is that this particular thing the hash function is being used at the client side so anyone can see the source code of it and they can actually replicate that what is happening behind the scenes right so we're going to see that but first let's try to understand if we instead of four let's say we have manipulated the price to one right now we have manipulated the price to one okay and this value is getting sent right since this value is getting sent first thing which is going to do is, is going to create the hash of it right since the value is different now the hash will be different right so the hash will be let's say d010 and then it is going to verify whether this hash is equals to the same hash which is provided which is a b c d right so it is going to verify and you can see clearly that a b c d is not equals to uh, the same hash right so it's not equal to therefore it's going to alert that there is a parameter tampering going on 
right so this is basically what uh, a security mechanism look like right the problem over here is if the source code in the javascript is not obfuscated or if the hacker is able to understand that how this hashing is going to be uh, uh, processed right so they can create their own hash using that particular thing right for example if we know that what is the hashing algorithm used for example let's say that hashing algorithm which is in use is md5 or sha uh, 512 or something like that right and then if we know the second thing which is that what is the values that are being hashed right is it only the price or is it the price along with some extra data right is it is there some kind of salt added in between the hash right we can see if we can see all these things then we can create our own custom hash right so it is very important for the developers to obfuscate these things so that the users or the attacker won't be able to identify what is the algorithm going on and all those dangerous stuffs right so in one of the scenarios you can see that if these things can be found at the client side then it can be very dangerous right i hope that you've understood it so basically what is happening over here is that this particular web application is using a client side code that is creating the hash of the amount right and then the hash is getting verified by the backend right so if we are able to find that hash, if we are able to create our own hash by using the JavaScript knowledge, then we will be able to create our own custom malicious hash, right? Let's try to see this in action so that we can understand it better. Thank you. Now let us try to see that how we can replicate that particular scenario, right? So I have created one lab for it. So first of all, let me just open my burp suit and my browser over here. Burp suit. Yeah, so as you can see, we have both of our Firefox as well as Burp Suite up and running. I'm just going to open localhost where I have hosted the lab. And as you can see, this is a cupcake shop, right? So this is a cupcake shop in which you can see the price is four and we can actually set the quantity, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just analyze the functionality, right? So how everything is going in between the client and the server, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just click on buy now. But before that, let me just turn on my intercept. Let's click on buy now. And you see that this is the request going on in the backend, right? So we have the amount parameter, which is the four, which is the same amount over here. And then we have the hash, right? So this hash is actually the hash of the amount or whatever it is. We need to just check the source code so that we'll understand, right? But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just click on do intercept. I'm going to intercept the response and we're going to forward this. And you say it says successful right we haven't done anything till yet so that's why it's successful no issues at all you can see it says payment successful obviously this is the lab so we are not going to actually paste us right so i'm just going to show a scenario right and now let's try to click on buy now and as we did in the previous video what i'm going to do is i'm going to modify this to three okay i'm going to modify this to three and let's try to forward this now but let me just turn on the response and you see that it now says 403 forbidden and it says parameter tampering detected right so this is the exact scenario which i have just showed you through the diagram and through the uh, through the explanation right and if i just forward this you will see that payment failed please try again right now one way to identify whether the hash is uh, coming from the back end or the front end is basically using the code over here right so you can see that when we are click on buy now the hash is directly present over here right which means that the hash must be generating somewhere in the front end only right because the hash is directly there if the hash we are sending a special request for the hash or something like that then there could be a different scenario or if this hash will be coming directly in the response then we can confirm that okay this thing is in the back end right but since this hash is directly going with the with the request then it should be generating somewhere in the client side which means the javascript code should be generating this now our goal is to find that particular javascript code right i'm just going to turn on the intercepts and forward this you can see it's a successful right now let's try to see the source code so that we'll understand what is happening behind the scenes and you see we have all these things over here i'm just going to maximize it and over here you see that we have this script over here right so let's try to understand what is the script so it says that it is a function to generate md5 hash right and you can see it is using md5 so first thing we have identified that the algorithm is md5 right the second thing is that we have this click uh, we have this amount quantity over here right and then it is actually uh generating the hash right and if you see over here this line of code we can 
clearly see and even in the comment it says that it is generating the md5 hash of the amount right so now we have two things first thing is we have the amount right amount and we can see over here that the amount is being used by generating the hash and the second thing is that we have the algorithm the algorithm which is actually you know uh, creating the hash right we have the algorithm which is md5 and then we know that the md5 is actually hashing out the amount right we have both of these things and now we can easily calculate our own custom hash how we can do this very easy what we can do is we can just open a new tab and i'm just going to say md5 hash online okay let's just wait for a few seconds let me see if my intercept yeah the thing seems good yeah you see just click on the first link and what i'm going to do is since we know that the hash is generating of the amount value right there it is and see here it is right amount to string and this is the amount variable right from this code we have understood so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to say whatever amount which i want to tamper so if i let's say i want to change the price to one dollar so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just add one and then i'm going to generate md5 hash of it right you see we've got this md5 hash we also got the sha1 hash but it is of no use for us why because we already know, already know that the algorithm which is in use is md5 i'm just going to copy md5 hash and now i'm just going to click on buy over here let me just adjust this a bit okay leave it uh, i'm just going to Turn on the intercept over here and just going to click on buy now. You see that the amount is 4. I'm going to just modify this to 1. And since we know that this hash is different, so we are going to change the hash value with the hash we have just generated of MD5. Paste that. This is the hash, right? And I'm going to just intercept the response. And you see that now it says successful, which means that we were successfully able to tamper with the parameter. And now it says that payment has been successful, right? Let's try to inspect the source code to understand what is exactly happening at the back end as well, right? So it is, it is the exact same scenario that we have just discussed uh, in the diagram. So I'm just going to go to the lab which I've created, parameter tampering. And let's try to analyze what is happening in the source code. So index.js and you see there is post request going on at this pay endpoint which is the exact endpoint where we are uh, sending the request for the payment and you can see that it is actually extracting the amount and the hash variable which are sent in the request body then it is going to create the md5 hash of the amount right and then what it is doing is it is verifying whether the new hash which this particular backend has created is the same hash which is present in the request body in the hash parameter right if it is then it's going to send successful otherwise it will detect parameter tampering right so this is the reason why we were able to tamper with the parameter one of the main reasons was that we were able to inspect the source code everything the encryption the hashing is going at the front end that's why anyone can see the javascript code right and we can easily understand that what is happening in the javascript itself this is the reason why you should also know some basics of javascript so that you will understand what is happening like i don't agree with anyone who says that you don't need to know any programming language to get into cybersecurity, you actually need to know some of the basics of each and every programming language so that you will understand that what is exactly happening if you want to stay ahead in the game, right? So this is the reason why we are able to do this. I hope that you've understood it. If you have any doubts, if you have any issues, feel free to let me know your doubts or issues in the comment section. Also, do join our Telegram channel if you want to stay updated with the latest trends and technologies related to cybersecurity as well as ethical hacking. And lastly, if you like the way I teach, then I have three awesome courses running in Udemy. You can check them out. The first course is the ultimate guide to hunt account takeovers. The second course is hacking windows with Python. And the third and the, the newest course is bug bounty, the ultimate, uh, the art of web reconnaissance, right? You'll see over there that how we can dive deep into a target, how we can 
do proper reconnaissance before like attacking a target right so if you are interested then go ahead and check it out the link of all of these courses are given in the description and now with that being said keep learning keep hacking and thank you so much for watching